What's up, you guys? So I watched the verses between Bone Thugs and Harmony and 3-6 Mafia last night because I love Bone Thugs and Harmony. And I remember listening to them when I was a girl. I have an older brother and he used to blast his rap music really loudly from the speakers in his room whenever my mother would leave the house. And I would be sitting up in my room jamming, listening to Bone Thugs and Harmony. Bone Thugs and Harmony were one of my favorite groups, them and Snoop. And I wanted to share with you the backstory behind the physicality at the verses last night between Busy Bone and 3-6 Mafia because there's such a deep backstory to Busy Bone and why he was so triggered when Juicy J told him to SMD and why Gangsta Boo immediately started calling him sis, the sis word. So after the physicality last night, someone tweeted, Busy Bone was kidnapped and abused as a child. His case was featured on America's Most Wanted. You don't know what someone telling him to SMD ignited. And so that's what we're going to get into today. Busy Bone of Bone Thugs and Harmony was one of the first few abducted children in America that was rescued due to the efforts of John Walsh and America's Most Wanted. And a lot of this backstory comes courtesy of Medium. I'll leave a link below in the description box from the article Breaking Boyhood, The Abduction and Abuse of Busy Bone. So Busy Bone's real name is Brian McCain, and McCain is his stepfather's last name. So when Busy Bone was only four years old, his then stepfather, Byron McCain, a former Pittsburgh Steelers fullback, kidnapped Busy Bone and his two older sisters, Hope and Heather. So they were his biological daughters, and Busy Bone was his stepson, and he told Busy Bone that his mother and his grandmother was dead, and Busy Bone was unaware that he had been kidnapped and displaced. And Busy Bone said, as far as his stepfather, he was more or less working the system. He used to play with the Pittsburgh Steelers, then he went on to play for the Columbus Bucks. He went to college in Nebraska. He was a very intelligent man. That's how we went from state to state for so long without getting caught. And eventually, with them going state to state, they eventually settle on a Native American reservation. And someone from the reservation recognized Busy Bones' picture when they used to flash it at the end of the movie about John Walsh's son, the creator of America's Most Wanted, when they used to flash the pictures of the missing children. Someone on the Native American reservation, a neighbor, recognized Busy Bone and called in. And he said, when we were in school, they called me and my sisters down and were interrogating us, asking us our last names. I ain't never been a snitch, even as a baby. So I kept telling them the fake name, Jones, Jones, Jones. And eventually my sister broke it like you can tell. So then he told them his real last name and he was rescued. But during the time that he was abducted, he was abused and he opened up about that abuse in his music. In the song, Nobody Can Stop Me, he said, tripping on foster homes, saying I wasn't manly, manly, with a scarred up soul where I keep my skeletons, understand me. What if I said I was molested? Would you look at me pale? But I keep on bailing and I hope I don't go to hell. Stressed I will. Can I sell my bio? I was born in Ohio already on trial because pop said I look too light, but mom's just white. But I still had your smile and look at me now. Got to be proud of myself. So at this point in his life, when he was younger, he was teased first by his biological father for being too light. Apparently he is biracial and his father felt he was too light. And then he was also teased for not being manly. And again, he shared what happened to him at the hands of an older child. The son of his stepfather's friend is who abused him. And he shared that in his music. In another song, he said, everyone think I'm crazy. Everyone think I'm drunk. I told the world I was molested and they called me punk. And that's kind of what happened last night. When he threw that bottle, everybody thought he was crazy. Everybody thought he was drunk. But again, he said he has been molested. And so I think he was triggered when Juicy J told him SMD, SMD. It seems like he was triggered. And then immediately you hear Gangsta Boo start calling him sis, the sis word. And so that's why Busy Bone has always seemed unpredictable and basically hard to manage. He's hard to manage professionally. And fans even pointed out, like this person said, once upon a time, Bone Thugs and Harmony was so popular that the Source magazine gave each member their very own cover of the same issue. Never saw that before or after. 
Also, Busy refused to wear the costume or come to the photo shoot. That's why he's wearing camo. And if you look close at the pictures, you see how they're all wearing these costumes. Like you see Lazy Bone in this costume, like they're all wearing these costumes. But if you look at Busy Bone, he's wearing camo. He refused to wear the costume. Even for the album cover, they said he also didn't paint his face on the Art of War cover. Like he doesn't want to be dressed up in costumes. He doesn't want makeup on his face. Like it seems like it's very hard for anyone to manage Busy Bone and give him instructions. Like he seems like he just does what he wants to do. And then when you couple that with the fact that with 3-6 Mafia, their name 3-6 Mafia, like triple six, it's kind of like 666, which is called the Mark of the Beast. And so Busy Bone believes that they are leading people to believe that they sold their souls for success. Like before the verses last night, this is what he put on his Insta stories. He was like, well, 3-6 Mafia denounced Satan on stage tonight. That is the question. And he made a post and he put in the caption, I got something to say. This entire time during the countdown to this verses, these people have been complaining about posts. What they're saying in, in a nutshell is they don't want to be called devil worshipers. Well, what are you and what are your name three sixes for? What's that acronym for? F-O-H. That is the mark of the beast, is it not? Y'all grew up in the church, so you knew the ramifications behind naming yourself that to make people think you sold your soul for riches and fame. That's a classic. Now you got your money and you want to act like nobody can call you out on it. Y'all got me effed up. I say what I want when I want. I ain't saving you people because you don't want to be saved. There ain't a knob you can slob on to change the fact that y'all use that stuff for fame. Now through Jesus Christ, all things are possible, but you want to prove y'all not some devil worshiping people, then denounce Satan on this big platform tonight. I challenge you all. Now, everybody, let's see what they do. If they do not denounce Satan tonight, it's safe to say they know exactly what they are doing and who they are using and what they're using it for. Also, one more Ouija board reference like that covers the toll and I'm going to crack that B on top of one of you people's heads. It's not Ouija in harmony holes. So shut that up. Understand me? Now, let's see if 3-6 denounces Satan tonight live. Pressure. And then he tagged everybody involved with verses and said, I told them to leave me alone and let me go on about my devices. I told them now they souls on the line. I'm not playing with these people. God bless y'all. See y'all soon. So you can see where his mind frame was at before the verses even started. You can see where his mind frame is at. You know his background. And now you know how he feels about 3-6 Mafia's name. And so there was already a lot of tension built up within him before the verses even started. And so when 3-6 Mafia and Gangsta Boo was slow dancing to his music, and the way he performs happens to be the most melodic out of all of the members of his group. Like it's the most melodic, it's the most R&B like. And so when they were dancing to his music and mocking him, he probably felt triggered by that. Like he said, people have always said that he's not manly. And so he probably felt triggered by that. And then when Juicy J told him SMD, he told him SMD twice, he got physical. And you hear immediately, you hear Gangsta Boo calling him sis, calling him the sis word, which now, you know, knowing his background, you know why she was calling him that. She was saying all of that for a reason. And so he did apologize again on his Instagram. He said, I feel as a man, there is a time to apologize and be the bigger person, even if you do not feel wrong. Thank you for everything. But when you're a man, you understand there is a time to be the bigger person. Mistakes will be made. This is hip hop. If we supposed to be perfect, then it we wouldn't even be here. At Swizz, Swizz needed to be called and spoken to as well, even though he told me it was okay. Oh, beautiful man. <laughs> when I got back on stage, I meant what I said. I really hope you guys understand my passion for my music and my seriousness about God. I really believe in what I say. I'm an artist. I came back because I know a lot of people depended on me. Which, pause. That's very true, because can't nobody do his verses like he does them. Like, nobody can replace Busy Bone. But anyway, he said it was not scripted, but it ended perfect. A toast to hip hop. It gets a little crazy sometimes. And then he tagged all of 3-6 Mafia. And he said, hopefully I gave you enough hell to know what heaven can be like. You guys did a heck of a job and embracing me after all that took class as well. This is real. I am real. God bless you all. And now the memes have started. <laughs> 
So you guys, and he reposted this meme, but you guys leave a comment. Let me know if you watch, let me know if, what you think about what happened last night, what you think about, you know, Busy Bones background and the tension that he brought to the verses. Leave a comment and share your thoughts. As always, thanks for watching.